Welcome to all of you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is for us to worship today, and I'm glad that the rain didn't keep you away, that all of us arrived safely this morning. Um, welcome to everyone, of course, um, but I understand that we have some visitors here today. George and Cheryl Ginder, are, are you here somewhere? Oh, there you are. I understand that 50 years ago, you were married right here at St. John's, is that right? Yeah, well, welcome. Yeah. And, and Cheryl, you grew up in this church, and what, what was your, your uh, name at that point then? Kerber, okay, so if anyone remembers Cheryl Kerber, she's, she's here this morning. Welcome, so glad that you are able to worship with us today. Um, and up here, you'll notice all the beautiful shirts. Um, these are the folks that are going on our mission trip this week and that will be uh, representing us um, in Cincinnati and doing mission in our name and in the name of Christ. Um, so a little later in the service today, we'll be uh, sending them off with a blessing. Um, please, please note all of the announcements in the announcement sheet in the bulletin. We... Um, Last week we had lunch in the park. I think you had an announcement. Quite, quite a, a busy day and uh, earned lots of money for the youth activities. So congratulations on that. We also had an exciting week of VBS. It was pretty active around here with all those young children and the counselors from youth Lutherdale. Uh, of course, this, this week we're looking ahead to the mission trip. And also remember, a week from today, that we will be having an ice cream social here um, in the afternoon. And this is a perfect opportunity to invite your friends and your neighbors to uh, come and experience the fellowship that um, St. John's is so famous for. So thank you for that. Um, today, following worship, uh, is the send-off immediately, uh, Maria? Okay, send-off people, Mar and, and then fellowship time. Um, so we'll have the send-off for them, and then we'll have the fellowship time. And I know that, the, that there have been... Um, folks over there preparing our fellowship time, so please stick around and enjoy each other's company then in our, in our fellowship hall. Uh, also, um, the, if you want to walk on the water, you have to get out of the boat. Today's the last Sunday for that, so those of you who are in that class, we're still meeting, and we will have activities for the children um, at, during that hour, so those are, th those are some of the things that are happening today. Um, just an announcement about our worship. We will be having Holy Communion, and uh, all of you who trust in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ are invited to the Lord's Supper. I believe those are the announcements, so let's stand and sing.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Once when I got up, and once when I was trying to pack our vans for the mission trip, we all had two showers this morning, so I think we should be woken up and in good shape um, to be on our way to Cincinnati after worship today. I thank you all for being here. It's been a very busy week here at St. John's um, with some good times and some bad times. So we're here to celebrate today, though, celebrate many things. So first of all, I want to thank all of you um, Many of you helped us in numerous ways with an extremely successful lunch in the park on Friday with beautiful weather. Some of you baked goods, some of you donated soda and water and chips, some of you came to eat with us, some of you prayed for us. Um, it takes a village to raise a child and it takes a church to nurture and love children. So thank you for the many ways that you nurture and love the children and the families here at St. John's. As I'm standing in front, um, in awe of something this morning, and I will confess I did it on purpose, but there's not balance here today. We have a lot of people up front. We Lutherans do not sit in front of the church. 
We don't. I just saw a cartoon online yesterday, and it said the Lutheran seating chart, and everybody was in the back, and they were all spaced out everywhere. So it's really awesome to see, like, almost all the pews filled on this side today. Um, while all of you are special, we have some very special people here in these pews with us today, so I want to thank all of you for being here. These are our mission trip youth and our chaperones in teal shirts. We have Mr. Dave Bradner um, as our male chaperone this year. This is Roberta Wendell as our female chaperone this year. And then we have Aaron and Grace Bradner attending the trip, Gavin Glazebrook, Natalie Landgraf, Cameron Shoemaker, Jacqueline and Haley Wendell, Jillian Sutton. So we have a team of 11 of us going to Cincinnati, Ohio today. Amongst in the pews behind us is our strong support. Some of our parents, some of our former mission trippers. We got Jared back there. We got other former mission trippers. Amy Devitt, I see you back there. Okay. And then we also have special guests with us from Paw Paw today. Taryn and family, thank you for joining us. Karen is a special friend to our Jacqueline who will be leaving to join the service on Tuesday. So we will be praying for him this week while we're gone. But again, I thank you for all your support that makes these trips possible. So at this time, if there are any kids out there who would like to go on a mission trip someday with us, come up front. I need your help this morning. Come on up front. And if you've been on a mission trip before, I want you to come up front with us too. So that's you, high school kids, college kids, junior high kids, come on up front. That's you, Amy Devitt, that's you, Jared Fritz. College guys, you wanna come up front with us and help bless these kids? Yeah, Grandma Polish, no? Okay. Oh, and Brock, I'm sorry, I didn't even see you back there. He has hair now, so I did not recognize him. <laughs> That first year of college, you change a lot. Uh, mission trip team, if you want to come up front, parents and friends, I invite you to come, come on, up Pastor front Bruno. with us too for our blessing. Hold my hand. Tell me I'm going to tell me you know how to start. I know it's hard for you, but. Can, can you take Liam's hand? We would appreciate your prayers throughout the week while we're in Cincinnati. We will arrive there late this evening. We will be attending a water park on Friday um, before we come home. So we'll be home late Friday evening, but we would appreciate your prayers throughout the week. If you would like to follow along with the daily devotions that we will be doing every single day, they're on pink paper, and we are focusing on first love um, coming from 1 John chapter 4, which is cited on the back of our shirts, we love because God first loved us. You can find copies of that study on the information booth, and uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Thanks so much. Okay, Pastor Janet, I'm going to shh. Yeah, I, th I think we need, to, we need to join a circle and grab hands so that we're all connected here. I need to grab your paper. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yep, others that, want, others that want to join or whatever. Yeah, last chance. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait. <laughs> Bradner boys, you've been on a trip. Your parents, come on, get up here. You can jump up. So so let's let's have everyone stand here. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're close to other people and can take their hand, fine. Here, if not, then we'll we'll have a have a vision of all of us connected here this morning. So let us let us pray a blessing. Almighty God, we thank you today for our brothers and sisters in Christ who will be, be traveling to Cincinnati to serve others in your name. We pray for Aaron, for Grace, for Gavin, for Matt, Natalie, for Cameron, for Jillian, for Haley, for the chaperones, Maria, for Dave, for Roberta. Protect them in their travels. Give them strength in the work they will be performing. Keep their hearts and their minds at peace and allow them to be a blessing to the people they will be serving. 
just as those people will be a blessing to all of us. And when their mission is complete, bring them safely back to us, where they can share their stories and be renewed for further service in your name. In Jesus we pray. Amen. I think the best way for you to bid well for bid for well to us today is we will receive uh, we will form a receiving line in the entrance to the fellowship hall directly after worship if you want to give us a handshake or a pat on the back or um, your own well wishes and then that reminds you to go get a cup of coffee and some refreshments so thank you okay well go in peace and if there are any children at this point who want to go over to the uh, mrs bradner is the children's person today so follow her on Thanks, over sorry. here if you are going to children's church Psalm 15 is believed to be a psalm that was written as people enter into worship. Here at worship is where we expect to encounter God face to face through hearing God's word to us and through experiencing God's living presence which surrounds us here. To approach God in worship invites us to give God our complete loyalty. And in return, we can expect that our lives and our actions will be changed. Psalm 15. O oh Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with their tongue and they do no evil to their friends, nor cast discredit upon their neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and stand by their oath, even to their own hurt. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Today's reading is from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things. And in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my suffering for your sake, 
And in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone all in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is a need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. On my desk in my office is a planner. On the planner is a calendar. In my calendar is a to-do list, things that I need to do. I also have one of those to-do lists on my desk in my office at the house. I have a to-do list on my phone so that when I'm out and about, I don't forget to do all of this stuff. Here's what I really like about to-do lists. When I get something done, I can check it off. What a feeling of accomplishment. I love that part. You have to-do lists? You know what I'm talking about? You have to-do lists at all? Things that you do? Some of you are nodding, yeah. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong, per se, with to-do lists, but here's the catch. I've discovered that my to-do lists have a tendency to get too long. They grow longer, longer, more items are put on there until there is no way that I can get all of this stuff done in the time that I've allowed. Now, you probably guessed what happens. Stress starts growing, right, because it's like, oh, be able to get all this stuff done. 
And then before long, it's kind of easy to slip into that resentment. Wait a minute. Why am I doing all this? Isn't anybody going to help out? I think of Martha. Martha, in her quest to have the perfect dinner party, must have had a pretty substantial to-do list. Now, I don't think that necessarily this was all self-imposed because there were some really high expectations about what you were supposed to do and be if someone was your guest. So there's Martha. She's working harder and harder. She's totally stressed out. She's frazzled. She's worried. She's pointing fingers at her sister. Lord, don't you care that Mary is just sitting there leaving me to do all the work? But instead of scolding Mary, Jesus looked at Martha knowing Jesus probably with a look of great compassion because he loved Martha. Martha, Martha, why are you so worried and distracted by so many things? There is the need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which cannot be taken away. The better part? What was that? About 12 years ago, I uh, was attending a training session for youth leaders. We had sat in the classroom for about two hours getting pretty restless. So the instructor said, okay, okay, we're going to go outside and we're going to play dodgeball. Okay. So we divided up into teams. We set the boundaries. We got out there. We faced each other. Our instructor threw in a couple balls to us. The idea was to throw the balls at each other. And if someone was hit, they were to be out of the game. You, you know the rules, right? I mean, you've, you've played dodgeball, maybe. The goal was to be the last person remaining. The whistle blew. The game began. It was fast-paced. It was energetic. It was loud. People were running around, throwing balls, dodging balls, but mostly we were shouting. When the game was over, we all flopped down on the grass, exhausted. Whew. Whoa, what a game, yeah. Our instructor came by us and always won to never miss a teaching moment. He began to ask us some questions. So how, how did the game go? Well, they weren't, well, I remember, you know, we gave them all the stuff, okay. Did you ever get frustrated? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got frustrated a lot. So, who did you trust the most? Well, pretty much no one, you know, that's how it goes. Finally, he said, um, did anybody know what I was reading during the game? We kind of looked at each other. Uh, reading? You were reading something during the game? The truth is, we were way too busy and distracted to notice him at all. Yeah, he said he was reading, and he claims he was reading it quite loudly. He held up his Bible, and he said, this is what I was reading. I was reading this story from right here, he said. Well, we certainly hadn't heard it. This led us into a discussion about all that had just happened, and how this resembles life in so many ways. We get busy, we work hard to avoid being put out of the game, we run about, we shout, 
we get things thrown at us. We throw things back to other people. Maybe we have a good time. Maybe we just totally get stressed out. But mostly, we get distracted from what God may be trying to get us to hear. So that's what we did that day. We all stopped right on the spot. We sat down, and we listened to him read the Bible story that he had read before. The story contained a message about God's eternal love for all people, given to us through Jesus Christ. It was a story about our worth in God's eyes, how valuable each one of us is, totally apart from anything, anything that we would ever accomplish. In our culture of hectic schedules, the relentless pursuit of productivity, we are tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are, how much we accomplish, how well we meet the expectations, maybe our expectations, maybe the expectations of others. Even our children and youth feel this pressure. Now I think it is true that much of our busyness and distraction stems from the noblest of intentions. We want to provide for our families. We want to get good grades at school. We want to do well with our teams, our clubs. We want to serve our neighbors, make a difference in the world. We want to make sure our children have every opportunity that they can get to enrich their lives. We, we really want to serve the Lord the best we are able. And yet, if our activities leave us with no time to be still in the Lord's presence and to hear God's word, we are likely to end up anxious and troubled we are likely to end up with a kind of service that is devoid of love and joy. And we even may become resentful of others in the process, you know, all those others who aren't pitching in. You know, as Jesus watched Martha that day, I think he saw her doing good and important work. I think Jesus sees us, too, also doing good and important work. But I also think that Jesus knows when we get too busy and distracted and are unable to hear the life-giving words that he has to offer. Those words Jesus spoke to Martha. Those words we know pertain to us as well, that we become worried and distracted. You are worried and distracted by many things, Jesus tells us. There is the need of only one thing, and Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. What is that one thing? Mary had chosen to pause in the midst of her work to be with Jesus, to sit at his feet, to allow his words of love and salvation to be central in her life. On this day, Jesus invites us who may be worried distracted by many things. He invites us to sit and rest in his presence. He invites us to hear his words of grace and truth. 
He invites us to know that we are loved and valued as children of God. He invites us to be renewed in faith and strengthened in our service. There's the need of only one thing, Jesus says. That is him, Jesus Christ alone. And the need to kneel in his life-giving presence. Let us recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You open the doors of your church, Lord, to all who feel distant or estranged. Give us courage to share your good news through conversation and love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Cultivate in all people a care for the world you have made. Make us mindful of our impact on creation for the good of our neighbor and future generations. We thank you for the gift of new life, including the birth of Callie Jean Martin. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile and bring peace to communities that suffer, including those who have experienced recent violence. Raise up and strengthen leaders and organizations that promote dialogue, hospitality, and restoration. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Open our eyes to see those suffering any affliction even ourselves. Open our lips to boldly beg relief in body or spirit for all in need, including those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for those organizations who serve others by feeding the hungry including the Mendota Area Christian Food Pantry and the ELCA World Hunger Ministries. Keep our mission team safe this week as they serve the people in Cincinnati on our behalf. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember before you the saints and loved ones who have died and rest in you, including John and Betty Fossick. Comfort those who mourn with the trust that your word is stronger than death. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share Christ's peace with each other.
us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to, to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, is now ready. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us with the food of everlasting life, the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and to invite others to know your love for the world. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us this day and forevermore. Amen. you now to come on over into the fellowship hall to um, uh, send a farewell to our mission team. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be